Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Start Pro. In the last session, we had discussed about the perform analysis command. We had also discussed about the two very important steps that needs to be checked after one have executed the perform analysis command. If you want to know more details about that session, you can click on the link that is appearing on the screen right now. Now, one of the things that we have discussed or one of the things that needs to be checked after executing a perform analysis command is to check for the equilibrium of the structure using the statics check table. In this session, we will discuss the statics check table in more details. But before we go forward, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button and join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. So this is the model of a simple supported beam pinned at one end and having a roller support at the other end. We have defined the structure as a plane structure using the stat plane command and we have defined a point load at the center of the beam. The point load is of the magnitude 20 kilonewtons. Now if we check for the span of the beam we find that the span of the simply supported beam is 5 meters and um, we can remove the node to node distance and we can also check the node to node distance from the start of the beam to the center of the beam which is 2.5 meters so 20 kilonewtons thus is located at 2.5 meters from the start of the beam or it's located at the center of the span since the span of the beam is 5 meters now once we are okay to run the analysis what we'll do is we will press control 5 to run the analysis and we can go into the post processing mode from here we can go into the reactions table and uh, we can locate the statics check table right here so if we magnify the table we can see that we have the fy loads the applied loads as minus 20 kilonewtons the reactions was plus 20 kilonewtons. We have zeros for most of the other columns and for MZ we have for the loads we have an MZ load of minus 50 kilonewton meters and for reactions we have plus 50 kilonewton meters which means that the applied and the reactive loads are equal and opposite thus the beam is in equilibrium. Now we want to see how we have arrived at these particular values. So in order to understand the values that has been given in the statics check table, we need to go back to the analytical mode. And it's important for us to know the location of the origin with respect to the particular beam here, because the statics check table numbers does have a relationship with the position of the global access system. So to understand where the global access system is, we can right click, we can go to labels and we can click uh, on this box or check in this box called show axis at origin. So we click on this and we can see that the global axis origin is located at the start of the beam. Okay, so we would look into the beam uh, from the front um, since it's a plane beam. So in this case, we are able to clearly see the global X and global Y and the global Z would be coming out of the page towards you. Now let us look into the beam that we had modeled in Start Pro in more details. You may remember that the left hand node, which was node number one, had a pin support and the right end node which was node number two had a roller support. A concentrated load of 20 kilonewtons was applied at the center of the span of the beam and the span of the beam was five meters. Now under a general system of coplanar loads the pin support will have two reaction one horizontal and one vertical. The horizontal reaction has been depicted as R1H, which means the horizontal reactions at node 1. 
The vertical reaction of the pin support has been depicted as R1V, which means the vertical reaction at node 1. The roller support would react to the Kloh-Planar system by a vertical reaction. In this case, that vertical reaction has been depicted as R2V, which would mean the vertical reaction at node number 2. Now you may also remember that the global axis system was so arranged such that the global origin formed the start node of the beam. The global Z axis is coming out of the start node or node number 1 out of the page towards you. Now the reactions has been so arranged so as to align in their positive direction which is if they are aligned along the positive direction of the global axis system. Now we want to solve for these reactions. So we would apply the equations of equilibrium. The first equation of equilibrium that we apply is summation of fx equal to 0. Now the load that we have applied to this beam is only vertical and there is no applied horizontal reaction load. So under the summation of fx equal to 0, the horizontal reaction at node 1, R1H, would be 0. Thus, we would solve the R1H reaction to be 0. The next thing that we'll do is we'll take a moment about the z-axis. Again, the z-axis is at the start node of the beam and it's coming out of the page from that node towards you. So if we take the moments of the load that we apply about this particular axis, we get this R2V into 5. That's the moment due to the vertical reaction at node 2 or the vertical reaction at the roller support. The value would be positive because by right hand thumb rule, if the thumb points towards the positive direction of the global z axis, the moment would cause a rotation in the anticlockwise direction according to the curl of the finger. So this moment that would be created by R2V would be positive. So R2V is located at a distance of 5 meters from the start node. So the moment due to R2V would be R2V into 5. And then we would have a moment that would be created by the applied loads of 20 kilonewtons. Now 20 kilonewtons would cause a clockwise rotation according to the right hand thumb rule and thus we have given a negative sign before the moment. The load of 20 kilonewtons is located at a distance of 2.5 meters at the start node so the moment would be 20 into 2.5. The resultant of it would be equal to zero as given by the equilibrium equation sigma mz equal to 0. Now if we proceed to solve this equation, we find that R2V is equal to 10 kilonewtons. Now we apply the last equilibrium condition of sigma fy equal to 0. Based on that, R1V and R2V would resist the 20 kilonewtons load. So as per sigma fy equal to 0, R2V which is pointing upwards along the positive direction of the global y-axis is positive plus R1V. We have assumed that the R1V would be a positive value that would be aligned along the positive direction of the global x-axis minus 20 kilonewtons because the 20 kilonewtons load is acting opposite to the direction of the positive direction of the global x y-axis. So this would mean that R2V plus R1V minus 20 would be equal to 0 as per the equilibrium equation sigma fy equal to 0. And if we go and solve for this equation, we will see that R1V is equal to 10 kilonewtons. Now, with the reaction solved, let us see how we obtain the static stable results. So this is what we obtain uh, by solving for the reaction. Now, if we consider only the applied loads acting along the y-axis, it would be minus 20 kilonewtons. Why? Because the applied load is acting opposite to the direction of the positive global y-axis. And if we consider the reactive loads along y, it would be the reaction 1V and the reaction 2V, R1V plus R2V, which are acting in the positive direction 
of the global y-axis so it is 10 plus 10 kilonewtons or plus 20 kilonewtons thus the applied load of minus 20 and reaction load of plus 20 are equal and opposite to each other and thus the equilibrium condition is satisfied and if we consider the value of the mz values and if we consider the reaction moment about the z axis it would be r to v into 5 meters which would be 10 into 5 meters equal to 50 kilonewton meters now for r1 v the lever arm is zero and thus it won't be creating any moment whereas if we consider the applied moment it would be 20 into 2.5 and we'll have a minus value because it would be rotating in the clockwise direction uh, you have to consider that with respect to the right hand thumb rule and the reaction moment was positive because it would have rotated as per the right hand thumb rule uh, in the anti-clockwise direction so the applied moment is minus 50 kilonewton meters and the reaction moment is plus 50 kilonewton meters thus it would be equal and opposite and thus the equilibrium condition is satisfied and this is what we have seen in the statics check table remember that it is the same as what we have obtained in the statics check table with the applied loads of minus 20 kilonewtons and the reactive loads of plus 20 kilonewtons applied load creating a moment mz of minus 50 kilonewton meters and a reactive moment of plus 50 kilonewton meters which is exactly what we have obtained now let us bring a slight twist to the tail here so what we'll do is we'll push the left hand node from the global origin by one meters towards right or towards the positive direction of the x-axis now of course the reaction values won't change and thus the fy values won't change in the static check table either but the moment values would change because we would be taking the moment about the global z axis so in this case what would happen is the applied moment about the z axis would now be minus 20 into 3.5 instead of minus 20 into 2.5 as before which would mean that the applied moment would be minus 70 kilonewton meters and the reactive moments would now be for r to v it would be 10 into 6 meters 5 meters for the span and plus 1 meter distance from the global origin so it will be 10 into 6 and for r1 v it would be 10 into 1 meters so it will add see in the earlier case r1 v didn't contribute to uh, the moment values because it was passing through the the global origin point and thus there was no lever arm but in this case since you, we have pushed the beam by one meter it's now started contributing and we see that the total reaction moment that you would calculate would be plus 70 kilonewton meters as expected though both these values the applied and the reactions are equal and opposite now let us see if we get the 70 kilonewton meters in the static check table if we push the beam in stat pro by one meters towards the right okay now we are back to the our beam model in stat pro what we do is we select the geometry cursor select the whole structure and right click and we say that we want to move the whole structure by one meter along the positive direction of the global x-axis and we say okay to that and um, it's okay with that and now we can see that the beam has moved towards the right and the global uh, axis or the origin is nowhere no, no longer at the start node of the beam the beam has been pushed towards the right by one meter and you could see even the global coordinates along the x-axis has changed now if you run the analysis of this beam now we have of course we have to save the changes the let the analysis run we go to the post processing mode apply and we go to the reactions and and we can see that the mz value is indeed minus 70 
kilonewton meters for the applied load and plus 70 kilonewton meters for the reaction loads as we had obtained. I hope you have understood the concept of calculating the values in the statics check or the equilibrium check table. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section below. If you have liked this session, please do hit the like button and please join us in the forthcoming session. Till then, bye-bye.